lesson, we're going to be using Desmos as a tool that we can use to help us figure out how to find the midpoint of a line segment. I've started us off here with a line segment that has endpoints of 0, 3, and 4, 3. Let's see if we can come up with where the middle of this line segment is just by using our observation. It looks as though the midpoint should be somewhere obviously in the middle of these two points. But is there a way that we could calculate exactly where? We know that we have the points 0, 3, and 4, 3. It looks as though the midpoint should be right around here. And that lines up with 2. 2 on the x-axis and 3 on the y-axis. And in fact, that's indeed correct. If we put the midpoint on here, 2, 3 happens to be where it is. So mathematically, what did we do to come up with this point 2, 3? Let's first look at the x values. Our first point has an x value of 0. Our second endpoint has an x value of 4. How do you think we came up mathematically with our midpoint having an x value of 2? Well, there's two ways to think about it. One is 2 happens to be the halfway point between 0 and 4. If you were counting to 4, you'd get to 2 halfway there. Another way to think of it is 2 is the average of the two x values. This x value is 0, this x value is 4. If we average those, which means add them together and then divide by 2, we get the value of 2. The same could be said for the y values as well. Look at how we have 3 and 3 as the two y values of our endpoints. Our y value of the midpoint is also the average of those y values. 3 plus 3 is 6, divide that by 2, you get back to 3. Let's see what happens to the midpoint when we change one of our endpoints to somewhere else. Let's move this point 0, 3, and we'll move it on down the x-axis. Well, we put it right at 0, 0. Take a look at our midpoint. Our midpoint moved as well, for obvious reasons. It's not going to stay here at 2, 3, because our line doesn't go through 2, 3. But mathematically, how do you think we came up with the values of 2 and 1.5? Well, our x values haven't changed. Our first point had an x value of 0, and a y, another x value of 4 for the other endpoint. The average is 2. Look at the y value. This 1.5 happens to be the average of 0 for this y value and 3 for this y value. 3 plus 0 is 3, divided by 2 is 1.5. This is a pretty easy way to think about how to find midpoints. The midpoint has two different values, an x value and a y value, where the x value is just the average of the other x values for the endpoints, and the y value for the midpoint is the average of the y value for the endpoints. No matter which way we move this around, that midpoint will still adhere to the same rules. It is the average of the x values for the endpoints and the average of the y values for the endpoints to get the midpoint itself. Let's explore a little bit more the actual formula for midpoint. And here it is right here. The x value of the midpoint is just the average of the x values of the endpoints and the y value of the midpoint is just the average of the y values of the midpoints. x1 and x2 represent the two different x values for point 1 and point 2. And the same thing with the y1 and y2. They're the y values of endpoint 1 and endpoint 2. We're dividing by 2 because we want to find the average. Let's explore now a couple of examples of how we can use this new midpoint formula to find midpoints of other line segments. Example 1 reads like this. Determine the coordinates of the midpoint for a line segment that has endpoints of A, 3, 5, and B, 7, negative 3. Our midpoint formula we have above here. So let's define point A to be point 1. So we can call these x1 and y1. And point B is going to be point 2. So this is going to be x2 and y2. Now to find the midpoint, sometimes we like to use capital M to define midpoint. This is going to 
be equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2. So let's write those values into our point. Remember, this is defined as a point. That's why it's in brackets and there's a comma in the middle. This is the x value of the midpoint. This is the y value of the midpoint. So let's start the x value of our midpoint. x1 plus x2. That's 3 plus 7. And then we divide by 2 because we want to find the average. We put a comma. And then the y value of our midpoint, y1 plus y2, 5 plus negative 3. So 5 plus negative 3. And then we'll divide that by 2 because we want to find the average. Now some simple arithmetic. 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So the x value of our midpoint is going to be 5. 5 plus negative 3, well, a plus minus is the same as just saying minus. So 5 minus 3 is 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the y value of our midpoint is 1, which now gives us our midpoint of 5, 1. Let's just double check on Desmos to see if we did it correctly. I've plotted the points 3, 5, and 7, negative 3 onto our chart. So now let's use our midpoint tool, and it plots it at 5, 1. Perfect. And you can kind of see that this point, 5, 1, is halfway between these two endpoints. So we did it correctly. All right, here's our second example. A line has a midpoint at M, 4, 7 and one other endpoint at point C to 15. Our goal here is we want to figure out what is the other endpoint. This one's a little different because it gives us the midpoint in this case and one of the other endpoints. And we need to figure out what the second endpoint is. Let's start again by writing out our midpoint formula. M equals x1 plus x2 all divided by 2 or the average of the x's, and then the y value of our midpoint is y1 plus y2, and then all that divided by 2, the average of the y values. Because this one's a little bit different, we're actually told what the midpoint is, 4, 7. So I'm going to write that over here, 4, 7. That's our midpoint. This 4, 7 is now going to equal what the formula is for the x values and the y values. And we have one of the endpoints, 2, 15, or the x1 and the y1 for one of the points. So let's substitute those values into our midpoint formula. x1 is 2, but we don't have x2, so let's just write x plus x2 here and then we'll divide by 2. We are told y1, that's 15, but we don't know the other y value for the other endpoint, so we're going to just say that's y2, and then we have to divide by 2. Well, now we have a little bit of an interesting situation. Our two unknown things are inside this formula right here. We have two separate formulas, one for the x values and one for the y values. So how we can actually solve for x2 and y2 is to create two different equations with these two different formulas. We know the answer to this formula, the x value formula, is going to be 4. And we know the answer to the y value formula is going to be 7. So off to the side, let's rewrite out those as two separate formulas. We know that 4 is going to be the answer to 2 plus x squared divided by 2. And we know that 7 is going to be the answer to 15 plus y2 divided by 2. So now we can solve these. If 4 equals 2 plus x2 all over 2, the, the way in which that we want to isolate for x2 is to first get rid of this divide by 2. To, to get rid of a divide by 2, we multiply both sides by 2. So 4 times 2 is 8, and that will equal 2 plus our unknown x2. 
Now to get x2 by itself, we move this 2 to the left, and it becomes a negative when it changes sides. So 8 subtract 2 is 6, and that will equal our x2. Let's do the same operations for the y's. We need to multiply both sides by 2 in order to get rid of this divide by 2. So 7 multiplied by 2 is 14. That will equal 15 plus y2. Now we'll move the 15 over to the left. It becomes negative. So 14 subtract 15 is negative 1. And that's our y value for our second endpoint. And there's our two answers. We have our x value for our endpoint and our y value for our endpoint. So therefore, we can say that our other endpoint, d, has the coordinates 6, negative 1. Let's just finish off by checking on Desmos to see if we did it correctly. I'm going to put in our two endpoints, 2, 15, and 6, negative 1. And let's see if we end up with our midpoint of 4, 7. Here we have those two plotted endpoints, 2, 15, and 6, negative 1. And when I turn on the midpoint, 4, 7 happens to be the correct answer. So that means that we've done it correctly. So to summarize quickly, we can use this midpoint formula, x1 plus x2 over 2, and y1 plus y2 over 2, to get us the average of the two x values and the two y values for our endpoints. And that will give us the x and y values for the midpoint of our line segment. Thank you.